not listening. This is the second time he changed that message because I was going to talk about the end time, the second coming of Jesus. He stopped me again. This time is not our time. I want to talk to you as for you can see. As for you can see. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 13. Verse 14 to 17, please. 13, verse 14 to 17. <coughs> and the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, remember what I just said? Lot was separated from him. Lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thy heart northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest <coughs> to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Remember thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as a dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land, in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Amen. Now, God has said to Abraham, he was going to bless him if he separated himself from his country and his father's house. And in kindred, Abraham was able to separate the first one, his country, and the second, but he took a bit of the third with him, he took with him his nephew Lot. Remember, God has already told him he had to separate with everything. Sometimes we are not listening what God is saying, we are not thinking what He's saying, we just think we can do whatever we want and think whatever we, we, we are thinking. God promised to Abraham remain pending until after Lot was separated from him. Why? Remember, at the beginning when Abraham heard the voice of God, he told him that. He said, promise. He said to him, separate from everybody, your family and everything, your country and everything, just go. And Abraham didn't know where he had to go. He just go. He understand he had to go, he go. But the problem is, he didn't really, really appreciate what God is saying. So he, he was disobedient on one subject. So he took a piece of, of his family. Because God said, no family, nothing. You go on your own. Just you and your wife go. Until God said everything that the promise had been promised to Abraham remained pending until after Lot was separated from him. And God told him to lift up. Now thy eyes and look, in other words, it is time to enter his possession. <clears throat> so he'd been, he been, he been going on for years and years and years. He couldn't see where he's going because he kept carrying the burden. Because I think Lot was heavy for him. And Lot didn't see that because he said that until 
He separated, and God said to him, This is the time to enter into your position of your long pending inner retage. So that's telling you, for so long you've been waiting. And you know, when God promised something, He never changed. So many years He've been promises to Abraham, He said, Okay, I will give you this, I will give you that. But He never came because of Lot. Until the Bible said He separated from Him. So He had to separate from Him. So you see what's happening to Abraham. God told him to leave everybody behind, especially his family. But he has so hard, like us. He takes his nephew with him, like some of us, we do try to take our niece and nephew to live with us, and we sacrifice our life for them. And in the end, you have to separate with them. You have to separate because for you to see, you already lose your blessing because God tells you to let them go and you hold, hold them. So they are holding your blessing. In everywhere, you have to let go when the time comes, you have to let go. Amen? Because if you don't let go, you are losing your blessing because your blessing is already here. Like I said to you, it's time for us now to stop asking God for blessing. Blessing is already come. It's already for so many years we've been Christian. So we have the blessing of the Lord a long time ago. He's already given us a blessing. Now what's happening now is Whatever every Christian, every churches need to preach the kingdom of God. It's the time for the kingdom to come down now. If we keep going and bless, oh bless me, Lord, bless me, Father, bless me, Jesus, it will never come. Because it's already here. That's our, 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 our trouble now. That's why we need to see, we need to have vision. How far our eyes can see. The Lord also brought my fall. You can see. You need to have vision to see what's happening. Because if you don't have, if you tell me you're a Christian, you never have a vision. So I don't know what's happening in your life. You need to have vision. You need to see. Because God has planted something in us who changed everything. Our world is changed completely the minute we become a Christian. The minute we become born again, the minute you say, Lord, you are my God, you are my Savior. I give my life to you. Your life changed. In and out. Everything changed. From now, your life has changed. You need to see. That's why he said to Abraham, see how far you can see. You need to have vision. When you have vision, everything that God has promised you is come to pass. That's more important. Because we sacrifice a lot. Listen. To me, the power of vision God said to Abraham was to see how far he could see. That's the power God has given him. How far you can see. Go. But the limit of the, his vision was to be the limit of his possession. Now, how far do you see? The more you limit God, the more you will struggle. You know why? Because you are not looking in the spiritual principle of perception and position. We are just looking in the natural. That I always say, man live in two worlds. 
the natural and the supernatural. The supernatural is spiritual. So we need really, really to understand the, the, the spiritual world. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. We need to have vision people. Chapter 3 verse 6. Look. And when the woman saw, he's talking about Eve, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, you see that? And a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit, therefore, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband, with her, and he did him. Vision. Her eyes were seen. She didn't see behind what God said to them, don't eat that, don't touch that. She didn't see the spiritual things behind. She was looking in the natural. The fruit was beautiful, so she won't eat it. She's going to and, and, and have it. That's the trouble with, if you look in the natural. Now, the more you limit God, the more those things are happening. Now, and the more you limit God, you will struggle. You know why? Because you are not looking in the spiritual. <coughs> not looking in the position. He saw that the, 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 the tree was good for food before she proceeded. She, to take the, the, the forbidden fruit. So you need to be careful what you see because it can take possession. So when you see, if you see in the natural, it can take possession. So we need to be careful. We need to be, I repeat it again, man live in two worlds, the natural and the spiritual. If we look in the natural every time, we will be in trouble. Because the natural will see good things, beautiful things. But when there is the beautiful things, trouble is there. Another word, we are looking in the flesh. So we need to look supernatural. Whether or good or evil, listen to me. As far you can see is your limited vision will give. You are a limited possession. As far you can see. If you can see just there, that's it. That's what you're going to possess. That's me. If you want to move, like we want to move, we want that church move. So we need to, like this morning you just talked about that. We need to move, we need to do something. Action. That's the number one. We need to have action to have our position. So that's I said to you, don't limit God in anything. Especially when you limit God in your giving, it will limit you in everything. You know, God instruct a brother to see. To see. Next, he spoke to him. He said, Move. In chapter 17, in verse 17, God was implying that vision should be given birth to action. So now he said, Look at this. So Abraham was looking at it. And now he said, No, not just look. You need to move. So he said, Move north, east, that. So by his feet, he had to move. That's what we're just talking about. We need to move. If we just sit down, we just sit crying, it's all the church, all the church is not growing, the church, the church is going to grow, we have to move. I've done it a couple, so many times. We make the church grow because we are moving. He had to come back again, but I need help. I need help. On my own, I can't do it. I need help.
to do it with me, please. So we need, with God, you need to be in action every time. We need to move every time. You need to talk. You need to talk to people to bring soul. You have to move every time. Don't just, just sit down and just read the Bible and, and come on Sunday. That's it. Like they, they move every day. Every day you hear her on the bus. Every minute you call her, she on the bus, on the train, she, she move. So we need to move. Action. The Lord said, when he told Abraham, arise and go. But we would prefer to sit and dream. I'm telling you, we need to move, step forward, follow that dream. Follow the dream that you have. Whether are going to allow, or what we are going to allow. We need to allow the position. The position is allowed. And we need to possess the land. That's what we need to do in when you say arise and walk through the land in the length of it and God asked Abraham to do with his feet he didn't tell him to possess it like that he said whoa whoa is there the promise is there the land is there whoa from north from south from east from west whoa our downfall we human beings we don't want to walk. We don't want to walk. We want to. We like to sit down, chat with our. Oh yes, yes, yes. Come to Mama Church. Come to Jesus. Come to do that. He's not going to do nothing. The vision. Each one of us has a vision. Each one of us has a vision. God has planted the vision, so we need to see. Like I just told you three weeks ago, I had that vision. The ship. I didn't know what this is until I'm watching the news. I said, oh my God. It just come to pass. What I saw, I saw dead people on that, on that ship. I didn't realize it until yesterday I was sitting down and I said, oh my God. That is already come to pass. What he showed me. So we need to really, really to understand that you have vision. To have vision, the vision we're going to have, it will take us far. That's what he said to, um, uh, to, to Abraham. He said to Abraham, separate from those people. Because he knows those people is going to hold him. Some of us, we need someone to separate from someone who's been holding us. We can't move. We need to tell them, listen, appreciate your help, appreciate this, but it's now for me to move on. We have to let them go, separate from them, so God is going to make that promise he gave you before. Because the promise he gave you is already done. It's just you need to go and get it. But if someone is holding, the minute you try to get it, someone is holding you like that, you won't get it. So there is things in our life we need to let go. We have to separate from them. Because we, if we don't separate from them, they're going to put us down. And we don't have the vision, we can't go far. What we see, we just see those people in front of you. What you do, you just do whatever you can see. That's all. You don't move. You don't see, oh, I can open another church. Oh, I can do another thing for God. If you don't do it, you will stop where you are. And when the Lord will come and say, I'll give you vision. I'll give you all the tools. You didn't do nothing. What are you going to tell him? He said, you've been sitting down. You didn't do nothing what I said to you. 
You see, vision is very important, but vision needs action. We need to have action in everything that we do. It's simple, like you, you go to college, you want to become a doctor, you want whatever you want to become, and you don't, you don't learn how, how to, to read, you don't want to know, you don't want to get the knowledge to become a doctor. How are you going to become a doctor? It's simple like that. Like me, God had put my calling to become a pastor, I didn't know my calling to go more. So, I was going as a pastor. But in the, 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 the thing of what I was doing, the vision was coming. So I didn't sit down just in one church. I was trying to move. Every time the Lord said, you have to move, you have to do this, you have to do that. I'm moving. I'm going. I'm going. Today I'm a bishop. Why I become a bishop? Because of those things I've been done, and that's why they call me and make me a bishop. So many churches have been opened. So many branches have been opened. That's the reason I become there. Some of, 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 of all my friends who was with me when, when we graduated as, as pastor, they're still pastor. Some of them are given. They're gone. Why? Because the vision has given us for years. But we didn't use it. Everything that has been given to us, we let it die. We need really, really, really to move forward. We need to get away of those sitting down and those thinking, oh, oh, let's so and so do it. I don't have time to do it. Let's so and so do it. We are wrong. The blessing of God is not like that. And we can't call us a good Christian. Good Christian is not that. Good Christian is action. Good Christian is love. Good Christian is tell you to go in the end kind. That's good, good Christian. You know the enemy is there. You know the enemy is going to eat you alive. But you go. When you go, they will stop. They will stop. I remember someone, he said to me, at the end, he stopped and he said to me, I can't do more. I said, why? He said, but you keep praying for me. You keep praying, you keep praying. We were calling, we were working together, and he wanted my job, and he couldn't get my job. And every morning when, when I got to, to the place of work, we, oh, I always prayed. I always talked to him. I always prayed with him. He said, but you keep praying for me, I can't keep going. So that's the more important, the vision God has given us. We need to really, really push and work with our feet, he said. He said, with our feet is action. And in, he said, when Abraham was in action and do all those things, he said, everything was established. Amen? Amen. In other words, if you have a vision, God is telling you with action, you will make that vision become a reality. There will be <coughs> no changing. God wants want you to see. Ask for, you are able to see. Ask for, you can go. I'm sure each one of us, we have vision. We want to do something more. When we were young, we had vision. We said, oh, let's go to England. We left, left, left our country. It's a vision. And we done it with action. If we are sitting down, we said, oh, I want to go to England. You will stay there. The England will just, you will just see England on TV. That's all. Me, I remember when I was young, I always said, I'm going to, to Wembley. I used to watch football on TV. I said, one day I'm going to see Manchester play in one day. And I had that vision. I said, I want, I, I want to go to, to England to see George Best. And I met George Best and I, I went to Wembley, the old Wembley. I had a vision, so I make action. 
I saw Joe Bess in Chelsea in a pub and we were talking and I told him. I said, when I was 11 years old, every Saturday you were on TV in my country. You were talking, you were teaching all the footballers. I said, I hope that day when I saw you, every time I said, I want, I want to meet you. Don't disturb me, please. Just go ahead and turn it. So, it's a vision. It's a vision. So you need to, to have vision. Forgot to close that door. Because it will come away. We need to have vision. We need to see behind that we are meant to see. So don't just say, oh, that is good, now I'm alright. No. Our vision is big. The Lord has given us massive, massive vision. If you don't make a move with your action, you will lose that vision. From today, you will lose that vision. That's the one who should close up for them. Yeah. We, from today, look, Elijah. Elijah said to Elijah before he was taken up to heaven. Second, second King, chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. He's talking about God sent the fire down. He didn't know that. But he said, when those people are coming, those soldiers were coming after him, he said, he said, my God, he said, God sent the fire to destroy those people. And really the fire came down. Because he had just the vision. And he possessed that. He knows God can do it. Because he had the, 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 the power of the vision. And he know. He know exactly if he's telling that to God. He knows the vision. That thing is going to happen. Because he knows. He had seen it. So he said to Elijah. Let's wait. 50 people come up. 50 soldiers come up first. With the first captain. The fire destroyed them. The second one came down came up to him, the fire came burn them. But the third one came, the third one said, no, I'm not going to do nothing. He said, just come and talk to, to the king. And he didn't burn them. What's happening here? Because Elijah already see the power of God, he had the vision, he knows it. He knows if he call upon God, that will come down, that fire will burn everybody. He knows that. That's what he said to Elijah. He tell him. But what's happening is action. You see, he knows because he told he told Elijah, he explained it to him. But the action must be applied to your vision to bring your position. I repeat it. Your action must be applied to your vision to bring your position. To get it, you need to move. We need to move. We need to come in front of the table of God and ask Him. That's where the vision is coming. And I thank the Lord today for the vision that is giving us and for the vision for this church. And this church vision is big. And he's not going to, when that church is going to grow again, this time the Lord, the vision is has given me, this time there's no one who's going to destroy it. In Amen. Jesus' name, Amen. I said it in Jesus' name. Amen. No one will destroy it because the vision now, the changing, been our Arrive. That's what he said to Abraham. Arise and do it. My arise now is arrive now. I'm, I'm, I'm arise. Before I was like an eagle, I was on my own. Now I'm not. The changing of the Lord has changed everything. In Jesus' name we praise this morning.
I thank the Lord for the, those word has given us. And I'm sure each one of us this morning has a vision to do whatever we have to do. And this morning I pray that the vision of the trumpet call that me and <coughs> Apostle Frederick we are doing this week will be successful. By the vision he has given us. So we know God is going to move, move us forward. Our vision is great, bigger than everything. And we thank God for that. We thank the Lord for whatever He is doing in our life. We thank the Lord for the north, for the, for the south, for the west, for the east. The vision is as giving us to do the word. And everywhere that where he's taking me now, because of his vision. And I thank God for those who follow me. God will bless you. God will multiply and increase whatever you have. In Jesus' name I praise this morning. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah.